So, if you watched my last vlog, you know that I basically looked like this when I ended my last vlog. So, we're here back again, starting a vlog. Literally turned off one clip, started another. Who knows how long this vlog is going to last. My last vlog, I had like footage over two weeks, I think. So, we'll see. But I am going to do some stuff because it's what you do in vlogs. First of all, reading the beautiful. I'm on page 232. Loving it so far. Want to sink my teeth into it. Get it? Vampire jokes. <laughs> it comes out tomorrow, so I definitely want to have my review up. I wish I had had it up sooner, but you know what? It's fine. As long as I get it up. I love getting mail. I feel like from Blue's Clues, mail time. I want to sing that every time I get packages. It makes me want to wag my tail. When it comes, I want to wail. Wow! So let's open it up. Firstly, we have more tabs. I go through these tabs very quickly so an order was needed then i have this circular tube and if you remember a few weeks ago oh this is hard to open that they were doing a campaign to get a matching dust jacket for carry on to match wayward sun in the cool style so i have that now and i actually don't have carry on and hardcover so now i have two book shaped packages so let's open them up because i don't know what is where <laughs> ha, yes yes i'm so excited you saw my last vlog i read stocking jack the ripper with isa and i immediately ordered hunting prince dracula because you know what? I love this series. I feel like it's going to be one that I absolutely speed through. I'm so excited to have this. Oh my god, I think this is on cue for the weekend because I want to finish the beautiful. That's been my plan, but you know what? I kind of have a busy week because tomorrow I'm going to a signing, which is what this second package has to deal with. Aha! Oh, I didn't think that this was coming. Okay, okay, okay. Well, first of all, I have Before the Devil Breaks You by Libba Bray, which is the third book in the Diviner series. I read this on audio. Oh, it's white underneath the cover. I read this series on audio, so I don't have copies of this, and I just got this third book because it was the one in the new covers that will match. I, I hope one day they release them in like the other covers in this style and hardcover but they probably won't but i wish they did i like love this series but i never ended up buying it because i was listening to it on audio however i like love this series so much i can definitely see myself rereading it in the future but i'm going to sign tomorrow that has libba bray holly brat black rory something the woman that wrote wilder girls Sasha Alsberg and it's a sign for the Gracier by Kim Leggett, which it sounds like a very cool like dystopian It said like handmaiden's tale and like hunger game vibes So I'm going to the panel for that and they have so many good authors on that panel and I was like well I love Libra Bray's work so I need to get a book by her to be signed and So I'm excited so I'll bring all my Holly Black books and all of my This this one Libra Bray book and then I don't have any other books I will buy the book for the author who's like signing it is there and then see which of these i can get signed <laughs> i really need another bookshelf i really do okay if you've been following me you may know that i'm obsessed with bts but um i have a new obsession and that is super m and i got the album in the tame version so we're just gonna open it because i talk about what i love on this channel okay oh it has a dust jacket on an album what the heck it's a dust jacket Oh, okay, interesting. So you get a photo card of someone that wasn't like the version that you got. So I got a photo card for Mark. Good morning. Today I am on my way to a signing for the Grace Year where I will also be getting books signed by Libba Bray and Holly Black. There's other authors there as well, but my backpack is already stuffed to capacity. So let me show you how I packed this. So here's my backpack my backpack and in here I have Before the Devil Breaks You by Libba Bray in the back pocket and then in this like Illumicrate thing that I got from the Dark Dawn box I have Cruel Prince and Wicked King and then I have Cruel Prince Wicked King so these are Barnes and Noble and regular and I don't know if I can get like both sets signed or like how many books I can get signed but I figured why not bring them all but then that means my back might hurt 
But you know what? We're just gonna roll with it because it's just one day. I do love going to events like this though because I feel like it's a good chance for me to get out and explore the city and see some stuff that I haven't seen before. So I'm excited. <laughs> I'm also running so terribly late today, but whatever. <laughs> It's now later in the day and I've got home from the signing and I am beat. I'm so tired. Doing stuff after work is fun, but it's exhausting. I'm exhausted. I also didn't sleep that well last night. Anyways, I didn't film while I was there. Like sometimes if I go to signings, I will, but it was a smaller setting and I, it just felt weird. I kind of just wanted to be in the moment and listen to what they were saying and not worry about filming. Sometimes that's just like a good thing. I don't want to always feel like I constantly have to vlog, even though I enjoy vlogging, but you know, I don't want it to take over my life. It was really great. It was Holly Black, Rory Powers, Kim Liggett, Libba Bray, and Sasha Alsberg was moderating, and I got books signed by Holly Black, Kim Liggett, and Libba Bray. I like just didn't have physical space to carry books by all the authors where I hadn't read them or hadn't. It was really great. I loved the panel discussion. I liked seeing the authors bounce off of one another. I just saw that they all had a lot of brilliant things to say and especially so the signing that the main author that the signing was for is Kim Liggett who wrote The Gracier and this book is basically like in this county Girls are told they have the power to lure men from their beds and drive women mad with jealousy. And in their year of their 16th year, they go out into the woods or somewhere where they're banished for the 16th year to re release their magic into the wild. And then they come back like purified for marriage. And not all of them will make them home alive. So 16 year old Tierney James dreams of a better life, but she is getting close to her own grace year. And it says their greatest threat may very well be each other. And like, it definitely is supposed to be like a very, the author called it speculative, <laughs> speculative feminist literature. And I'm really excited because it definitely seems like it's gonna tackle toxic masculinity, to rape culture, blah, blah, blah. I'm so happy that I got to go to this event because it was really cool. It's one of the smaller events that I've been to, but it was really awesome to hear from everyone. And I'm glad that I had such like feminist discussions there because I feel like really enlightened. It was also really fun. I'm, like my brain is just mush right now. Like I wish I thought I could think more of like what they had said. That was just like so brilliant. But just listening to them speak, they were all so brilliant. and. So I got my copy of Before the Devil Breaks You signed and it says, beware, be aware. Signed by Libba Bray and like I had a great conversation with her um, about like the audiobooks and how great the audiobooks were and how I read A Great and Terrible Beauty, like the Gemma Doyle trilogy back in middle school and like how that was like a very formative book for me in my reading years. Like back in seventh grade, like me and my one friend were obsessed with the Gemma Doyle trilogy. Like that may be a trilogy that I go back to at some point and I like I'm absolutely in love with the Diviner series it's fantastic and then okay so when I talked to Holly Black I got all my Holly Black book signs like this guy and this guy this guy and this guy and I like just choked when I, I like was planning on going up to her and being like I love Jude power hungry woman yes let's go which it was also a big point in the conversation okay now I'm saying things like it's getting light bulb going off but they talked about like mean girls and how like women should be allowed to be like, mean and be this but not just be a one note mean character but have like all this complexity about them it's just a really great discussion and i'm happy that these ladies are leading the way in ya literature because i feel like we're in good hands oh and then someone asked like should we be scared for queen of nothing and holly was like you'll be fine and i'm like so does that mean like I'm not gonna be fine? <laughs> yeah, but like that was really fun and it's it's nice meeting authors in different settings because something like BookCon is extremely stressful. It's very busy, very packed, and it's so much fun, but like this was just so much more low-key and you got to spend more time talking to the authors. Like I felt like in this signing I got to have more of a conversation with everyone 
than I like ever have it another time just because it's it was just a little bit more intimate so I really enjoyed that and I'm definitely going to be like I scope out all the local bookstores and I try to go to these signings as much as I can and it might still be in this vlog we'll see how much content I get but I am going to the ninth house signing for Lee Bardugo next week and I'm excited about that because it's Lee Bardugo and she is absolutely brilliant to hear her speak so it took me like three weeks to read this book just because I like stopped in the middle to read another book and then I didn't have time but I did it. I finally finished The Beautiful by Renee Adie and I loved it. It was so good. Her writing style really fit the 1800s New Orleans vibe and I really liked the vampires. It was definitely more subtle and you get to discover more as you go along. And then you have like this mystery also and I really liked like combining like the fantasy and the mystery and just like the intrigue of the vampires and new orleans is just a great great setting for a book so i really like this one i think i'm gonna give it five stars like it was really really solid um i have never read another renee audier book but i definitely want to get my hands on a finished copy because i adored this one that being said my next read is going to be the sequel to stalking jack the ripper which is hunting prince dracula and this one is a little bit thicker than um this one so i'm excited i adored this book i buddy read it with isabella last week and last weekend was it last weekend i think so and um i ordered the sequel immediately and now that i finished the beautiful i can start it and i'm so excited because like it's just really cool like there's pictures that go along with everything and like the ship in this is just like phenomenal i ship thomas Cresswell and audrey rose wadsworth together forever it's just like so good like they push each other in in the best way and like they compliment each other but it's also like this book is refreshingly uh feminist which i adore especially like in older times where it really goes against society's expectations to be like a more feminist and more straightforward thinking person and like audrey rose studies forensic medicine which is not seen as suitable for a young woman of the time period and she just like defies everyone's expectations to do that and I just admire that so much and I really really just adore this series. So I'm probably gonna get started on that and we'll see. We're buddy reading it and uh, 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 oh, I'm tired. I'm in Barnes & Noble with Jade, and we're gonna do the blurb challenge, which is something I just made up on the spot. She did, on the spot. Why don't you introduce yourself, Jade? Oh, uh, I'm Jade from Jaded Reader. I almost forgot the name of my channel. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're talking really quietly because we're in a random section of a Barnes & Noble. We're in the, um, what is it, test prep aisle? So I figured there would be less people here. Yeah, actually test prep is really like fitting because I'm going to be testing you. True, so yeah. the rules are, we kind of wanted to go off the first sentence challenge, but since we are in a store and not like our own personal libraries, she's gonna take a book and read the summary, like a book that I would potentially know, maybe I've read it, maybe I haven't, and not say any names or names of places, but the general like, you know what's going on and then i'm gonna try and guess it and then i'm gonna film it i just have my phone and i'm gonna like hold the phone so that i can't see what's on the screen 
and I'm just gonna sit there while she reads it to me. <laughs> we're just really making this up as we go. You're brilliant. That's what we're gonna do. Yeah. So let's give it a try. Okay. Okay. Cool. Let's see how this goes. On the floor, Barnes and Noble. As one does. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Okay, I picked two. One is, I think, gonna be easier than the other. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and I had to read it over to make sure I didn't give away. The power, the drama, the intrigue, the crown. This is the story of the, I can't say the- Blank? You can just say blank. The blank. Okay. <laughs> Do you need more? Yes. Okay. Keep going. So that was like <laughs> the blurb thing. Okay. Oh, I guess I could read the actual blurbs, like the people. Okay, I'll say what Sarah J. Mass said. Mm -hmm. Inventive, fresh, and deliciously romantic. Blank is an absolute delight. Isn't there like, like the flap summary though? I'm working on it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening, I swear. Oh no, this is gonna give everything away. Okay. Okay, well like give it's me- It's the summary. It's- Try and like take out as much as you can that you don't know need. When America won the Revolutionary War, it's people offered General George Okay, this Washington. is American Royals. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading it right now. <laughs> Good job. I was gonna guess either that or the selection based on like the first okay. few, the first thing, yeah. Yeah, okay, all right. Hopefully this next one's gonna be more difficult. Okay. I knew that you were involved <laughs> with American Royals, okay. so it's kind of like, you know, boost mm -hmm. your ego so I can tear you down. Okay. All right, this is the back of the next one. Okay. Blank is a beautiful poem of a book that touches meaningfully on such complex themes as forbidden romance, political subterfuge, and what exactly it means to be human. Fans of both fantasy and sci-fi, this book is for you. Masterful storytelling, woven with gorgeous poetic prose. You can't help but be lured in vividly imagined world, as heart-wrenching as it is unforgivable. Okay, so there's the back. Okay. Any idea? No. Okay. Perfect. A fantasy. A fantasy sci-fi. <laughs> You're That's doing poetic. <laughs> oh, in case like your viewers want to know what it is. There you go. Let's see if I know what it is. <laughs> Impossible love between two girls, one human, one maid. A love that could birth a revolution. Uh, do you want me to keep going? Yeah. Okay. After the War of Kinds ravaged the kingdom of Rabu, I might be saying that wrong, the Otome, designed to be the playthings of royals, took over the estates of their owners and bent the human race to their will. Now, uh, taking out name, a human servant rising in the ranks at the House of S Sovereign dreams of, of, dreams of avenging the death of her family by killing the Sovereign's daughter. Uh, Lady Blank, Blank who was made to be beautiful, to be flawless, and to take over the work of her father. Blank has been prepared to do just that, to inherit her father's rule over the land. But that was before she was betrothed to Blank, who seems to have a thousand secrets. That was before she discovered her father is in a benevol as benevolent as she thought. I have no idea what this is. <laughs> I was thinking because, okay, yeah. you want hints now? Okay, I'm gonna guess. Okay, go for it. Is it, um, of, oh God, it's the lesbian one. <laughs> of Ice and Shadows? It's not. <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about? I okay. do know what you were talking about. I have to think for you any other lesbian books that have robots. I literally have, will I have heard of this book before? Yes, uh, specifically, can I tell you who you'd probably yeah. hear from? Madison, Madison Mary of Princess of Paperback uh, <laughs> keeps talking about this book. It's why I picked it up. <laughs> well, it's not Shadow Frost. It's not. What, else, what other books has she been talking about? I can't tell you that. Wow, I'm like a fake friend right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean to accidentally call you out. <laughs> All right, I give up. Okay. What is it? It's The Crier's War. Oh. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> one out of two. Not bad. Not not bad. Not bad. Okay. Do, That's yeah. round one. All right, round two. Mhm. Mm oh. I didn't see. I didn't see. Okay. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, okay, I have three here, but if you get the these next two, then I'll make you do a bonus round. Okay. If you get if you get one of them wrong, then okay, you're good. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, for the viewers, this is the book. 
and blank's world is divided by blood those with red and those with silver red queen <laughs> That was a dead giveaway. What? Really? <laughs> yeah. I've never read the series. I didn't know. <laughs> I used to be obsessed with Red Queen. Oh. So, yeah. Okay. Well, it was like the first, the um, <laughs> like first YA series that I read when I was getting back into YA. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, then there we go. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'll try this one. <laughs> For the viewers, this is what it is. I don't know exactly what it is. Sounds like a hardcover. Well, it's not. Okay, interesting. I Unless, might be lying. Okay. I don't I don't want to throw you off. Okay. <laughs> okay. When Blank finds a polished blue stone in the forest, he thinks it's the lucky discovery of a poor farm boy. Perhaps it will buy his family meat for the winter. But when the stone brings a dragon hatchling, Blank soon realizes he stumbles upon a legacy nearly as old as the Empire itself. Overnight, his simple life is shattered, and he is thrust into a perilous new world of destiny, magic, and power with only an ancient sword and the advice of an old storyteller from gu for guidance. Blank and the fledgling dragon must navigate the dangerous terrain and dark enemies of the Empire, ruled by a king whose evil knows no bounds. Can Blank take the mantle of the legendary dragon riders? The fate of the Empire may rest in his hands. Alright, guess one is Aragon. Let's guess two. Um, dragons. Okay, well, you were right with Aragon, so. Oh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to see. Okay, bonus round. Okay. Apparently, I suck at picking books. And you or I'm really just good at guessing ones. it, yeah. I, yeah, that might be. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last one. Okay. I'm going to leave a lot out. I don't know where the camera is. Okay. So, so. I'm leaving a lot out. So. When assassins ambush her best friend, the crown prince, Blank risks everything to save him, exposing her ability to perform all kinds of magic. The only people who possess this power are the a pair of Blank, a queen of light, and a queen of blood. Fearborn. Dang it, I was like, that's probably a giveaway. <laughs> also, can we just like, Acknowledge it's one of my favorite books. I know, but I was trying to, I was like, man, they'll really embarrass you if you don't get it right. I know. Well, like when you said Ambush Your Best Friend, I'm like, I know this book. I'm <laughs> like, the first oh, yeah. Line. <laughs> I'm good at this. Yeah. I, yeah. You have to see how Jay did <laughs> over on her channel. I'll link it up below. Good morning. It's October, how many days at 15th, which means. No wait, is my book signing not today? I'm an idiot. I thought the Lee Bardugo signing was today, but it's tomorrow. Uh, well, that's funny. I would have showed up to the Cambridge Public Library like, hey, what's up? And there would be no signing. Oh my God. I can't believe I did that. <laughs> Anyways, a reading update. I haven't really read much, but I, picked up Monstrous on Sunday when I was at Barnes Noble with Jade and I read a little bit of it yesterday like the first chapter and it is gorgeous and gory and gritty and I'm loving it so far this is just like I feel like the perfect comic for me it's phenomenal anyways I can't believe that I messed up the day of the signing it's fine okay bye <laughs> hello now it's night time and I have a big old stack of packages to open and I don't really know what they are. Well, I actually remembered what some of them are, but uh, let's, let's just go here. Yes, it's my stickers. I ordered Harry Potter stickers for bullet journaling purposes. The great thing is though, like I just remember now like what I ordered, but I didn't remember, you know, when I got all these packages and I'm like, what are these? Oh, this one's so cute. This is a present and I don't know what it is. Where is it from? So let's see what is in here. I'm so curious. Oh! Oh, yes. Oh my god. Okay. This isn't the present. This is my present to myself. Which means what? What did she get me? Okay. I don't know what Isa got me, but these are the notes. Yes, this is more BTS stuff, but um, no shame, honestly. They're, oh, and it came with photo cards. They're just like the, the like unofficial photo cards, but they're super cute. 
so if you don't know one of the things that got me into bts is that they have this alternate universe which takes place throughout their music videos and there is a webcomic online and now these notes are like more to the story and like so each album comes with like the notes but obviously they're in korean and i do not read korean so, yeah, so these are the notes that come with the album all the albums put together into an actual book so it's kind of like the tie-in and like the bts universe is like very dark so like i didn't know this going into the webcomic i thought it was just gonna be this cute webcomic about a boy band that i just discovered and it was so dark um themes of like suicide and depression and murder and i was just like what is going on and that's really i think what made me connect to them as artists is just like the all of this stuff that they had put the thought that they put into it it connects to all their music videos and there's little hints in each music video and like it, i just like love diving into these like conspiracy theories and stuff so now these are all the notes translated into english that come with each album that tells the story i'm really excited to read them and i think whenever i get a chance i'm going to schedule like a weekend day to go through all of the content that i have already so like all of the music videos and stuff that go into it read the webcomic again and then read this so like it's gonna be an event and i'm really excited for it so this means that this package is from isabella what did she get me because this package is huge i'm i'm like no, no way awesome Okay. My heart. Stop. This is so amazing. Oh, I'm gonna cry. Stop. Oh. Isabella got me Death Note the Black Edition Volume 1, which I have had my eye on for so, so long. Oh my god. No way. I've just like been dying to get into manga and this one just seems like awesome. And I know that Isabella has talked about it and like... <laughs> and she wrote a really sweet note and she's... I'll, I'll read a little bit of it. I know you told me not to get you anything, but that's literally like telling me not to cry every time Jimin comes up on my timeline. This is an amazing intro to manga and I'm so excited to see what you think of this. My heart is melting! And then she also got me Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, the Full Metal Edition, which is like this this beautiful edition. Are you kidding? Oh, it's so beautiful. Oh, and the pages are like, obviously you can't feel them through the internet, but like, they're like plasticky pages, not papery pages. What a sweetheart. I'm, I'm touched. Okay, so this, note says jimin once told v i can't help you you but i can be strength to you one of my favorite quotes even though we're thousands of miles apart you can always count on me to help you through anything i really hope you love full metal alchemist brotherhood because everything me love you what did i do to deserve such a sweet friend i could cry right now i'm so touched isabella thank you so much you have no idea how much i love our friendship and you're just like the sweetest person on the planet and i know that like we can just always talk to each other about stuff and i just feel like i'm not like a am i emotional maybe i don't know but like the thought that before i started my channel i just watched people on booktube talk about books and i didn't have any of these amazing people in my life it's just crazy because i've met so many like so so many friends through booktube and they're people that i get along with like on like a, a level that is hard to find in person honestly like it's hard to find someone that like really gets you about the stuff especially about like reading and stuff and i've found like a wealth of people that i really connect with and i'm so thankful with and if i didn't put myself out there on the internet and start this channel like i wouldn't have had that and like just like it's just so meaningful to me and like thank you to everyone that is my friend like i truly appreciate you i just like don't know what to say because i'm just in shock and like my heart is going to burst
And I would be remiss not to mention that speaking of booktube friendships, I got to meet my wonderful friend Jade from the Jade Reader on Sunday. She's in town in Boston and we met up and we hung out and it was just like a fantastic day. Like Jade is such a sweet person and it was so great to talk to her in person. It like really wasn't awkward at all because we do talk a lot on Voxer and stuff like that. And it just, it's like weird because you like watch people on the internet and you like get the sense of their presence and like more often than not your sense of their presence matches up to what they're like on the internet so when you see them in person it's like not a surprise you're like oh you're exactly how you expect i uh, expected you to be but also like you're here in front of me so it's like cool so yes we had a fantastic time and we went to barnes and nobles and we did that mess of a challenge that should be in here and i ended up getting a harry potter and the goblet of fire the illustrated edition which like I flipped through this a little bit the other day. I'm gonna find like one picture to show. Ooh, I think the picture that really got me towards the end is this picture in the graveyard at the end. I just think that's so like haunting and beautiful and like the quality of these books is just phenomenal. And um, I can't wait to actually like read them. I don't know <laughs> when I'll get around to them. I don't wanna say when they're all out because that's literally, that that's, three more years. I don't know if I can hold off that long on reading illustrated editions, but like I know that this is something that I'm gonna treasure for the rest of my life. And I think reading them in these beautiful editions is just gonna be such a great experience. And uh, this is just like a fantastic project. And I also got Monstrous, which like I have had my eye on this comic. I cannot tell you for like months and I've been holding off on buying it. And I started reading it last night, actually, and I I love it. Like, I'm in love with the art style. It's gritty and dark. I think I mentioned this all this morning. I repeat myself a lot. But, yeah, I'm really looking forward to continuing on reading this and just taking my time, soaking up the beautifulness, and, like, yeah, it's really great. So, now, oh my god, I've been recording for 19 minutes. Where does the time go? Anyways, so now this is the new thing in life that I'm trying and it's that I need to go to bed on time because I've been staying up late doing whatever. So I'm on like a strict cutoff at like 11 p.m. I stop whatever I'm doing and I just go to bed. And I can like lie awake on my phone for a little bit or whatever, but like I should be in bed by 11 because sometimes I'll be doing other stuff and then I'll wanna read and then I'll stay up late reading and then it's just like a cycle because then I like sleep in a little bit too late in the morning so then I get into work later, I stay at work later just continues and continues. So I just like wanna get better night's sleep. I think it's just gonna make me feel better and function better as a person. So the way that like I see it is that if I know, okay, I am putting down the book and going to bed at 11, that whenever I start reading, I know, okay, I only have this amount of time to read, like let me make a count so that I'm not gonna be like scrolling on Twitter and like getting too distracted or whatever in that time that I should be dedicated to reading because I think I am a little bit of a distracted reader at points. So I think that is gonna be kind of like how I mitigate that. Also, I tweeted about this, but I think I, I fall trapped to this like a lot and I always have to take a step back and reevaluate like constantly that you, you shouldn't feel like you have, like the, these past few months I've been reading like maybe like nine, 12, whatever books and like like books, not like comics and stuff added in. like. In July, I read 15 books, and that's great, but at the same time, like I shouldn't feel like I have to do that every month, and I shouldn't feel bad if I only get like five or six books, because that's still five or six books, like, and I know that there's this this feeling of always wanting to read the new things, because like in the book community, we're plugged into like what's new, what's coming out, you know, like advanced readers' copies, stuff like that, and you just get so excited to read, and you want to read everything. And it's okay to take your time with books and it's okay to not read a bunch of books a month. You, like you don't need to read 10 books a month to have enough to have content. You can just make whatever you want. Even if you read like two books a month, who cares? Just post a short wrap up with two books. Um, and the less books you read, the easier the wrap ups are to make, honestly. So I'm just going at the pace that life allows if i am not as busy and i just have a lot of time to read then of course i'll take that time to read but if not i'm just going to read when i have time because it's something that i do for relaxing and enjoyment and that's that with that being said it's like about 9 10 right now and i have until 11 to read so i'm going to be reading hunting prince dracula that's just how i'm going to manage my booktube channel and my life 
and having a bunch of different hobbies and things that enrich my life without getting too stressed over the reading portion because I think being plugged into an online community is great because like I said you can foster all these connections but it also can cause this this pressure that like it's, it's so unnecessary like I shouldn't feel bad about not reading when reading is just something that's there as an extra. Those are just my two cents. <laughs>